morning, First Assembly. We're glad to have you today. If you're able, let's stand together and prepare our hearts to worship. If you're watching us online, thank you for being with us this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. That's what the Word of God says. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Can we put our hands together all over the room right now? If you're glad to be in the presence of the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the name, one who reigns forever, still the same. Praise the name. All names, the one who reigns forever, still the same. Praise the name. No other name that's higher, no other name that's stronger, no other name forever.
face to face we'll be like him he will wipe our eyes dry take us up to his side forever we will be his singing blessing and honor glory and power forever to our God singing blessing
Come on, lift up your voice right now all over the room. Join with the angels and say blessing and glory and honor and power. Be unto him who sits upon the throne. Hallelujah for the Lord Almighty reigns. There is none above you. There is none beside you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. be silent.
feel that invitation the Lord said just come close and if you're here in this sanctuary and even those who are watching us online you can thank him for the breath you breathe can't you amen we can thank him because worship has become even more precious amen can you say amen, amen. will you lift up your voice right now and just bless the Lord father we praise Hallelujah. you Jesus that name that is above every name. We thank you that we are moving steadfastly toward that moment when there will come a decree from heaven that the kingdoms of this earth have become the kingdoms of our Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you. I feel just like screaming at you. <laughs> Shout a little bit, amen. Has God done something for you in this past how long has it been since we've been in this building too long amen i know for me personally he's done something to help to strengthen and we just praise him listen this is our time we just join together in lifting our needs to the lord with confidence amen we pray but we believe would you join us father right now in the name above every name, the name of your son Jesus and our Savior. We lift up our voice first to praise you first and to thank you. We bless you, Lord, because you're God, you're true, you're steadfast, you remain faithful. In a chaotic world we live in, you are constant and true. We can put our eyes on you, Lord, and walk safely, confidently in this world. And we bless your name. And we also lift up the needs of our family, Lord, our church family. I pray for the McDaniel family, Tim and, and Larry and their children and grandchildren. We pray for the for the Wells family. We ask your comfort for these families of grieving, the Barnes family. Lord, be with them today. Your comfort, your help, your strength for us. I pray for Randy Wilson. I ask you, God, to touch him with your healing power today in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we remember all of those who still battle with this virus. We pray for them not only in our church family, but in our community. We have been hit hard, but we know that grace is available to us, and we know that victory is promised through Jesus Christ. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can be here in this sanctuary today. And we pray for those who are watching us online who don't feel confident to be out. We ask you to be with them. Heal and strengthen each one. Thank you for that. Amen. Would you give the Lord a clap offering? Praise be to God. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to ask the ushers to come and join us as we continue our worship now with our tithes and offering. Has God blessed you? And we can bless him. Amen. Heavenly Father, today again, we just bow, Lord, before you, acknowledging your grace has been abundant and liberal in our hearts. And now we return with our tithes and offerings and pray that you would bless and use them to advance your kingdom through Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless you as you give today. And while the ushers are serving you, I'd just like to prepare you to turn your attention to the screens. We have a immemorial slide presentation this is honoring and remembering those among us who have already joined that heavenly host in heaven. They lived here, served the Lord in our church family, and now they're standing, worshiping around the throne of God. We're a little later than we usually are in presenting this, but it's because of COVID, we couldn't be here in person. But uh, I thought that you'll be blessed as you remember these precious people with us today.
those folks that you saw there. I didn't realize that that verse was going to be on the end. I was going to state it to you myself. Because what, is, what does it say? Therefore, since. So it says, in light of the reality that we are surrounded by such a great cloud of people who have gone before us, who are now presently in the presence of the Lord, having received their eternal reward, what does it say for us to do? Cast aside every weight and sin that so easily wrecks us and besets us and run the race. And so today, this crowd, crowd of witnesses, this crowd and cloud of witnesses is encouraging, cheering us on to do what today? Come on, somebody with some energy here, tell me this morning, to run the race, right? To run the race. And I want to encourage you this morning as we talk briefly about this upcoming family campaign that we're embarking on. That's what it's about. It is about running this race with our family so that together one day we will all stand before the Lord and hear, well done, not having left anybody behind, right? And so if I could take a minute and just share some specifics about this campaign, we're excited about it. It is going to start next Sunday, and I hope that, uh, that even as we talk this morning and this week that you will just... Uh, if, if you haven't gone ahead and made a choice that you're going to participate, that you will do that. But if I could share some specifics, some of you saw those couple Facebook videos that I shared, but maybe to, to, to explain it just a little bit more, what it's going to look like during this nine weeks. Again, it's called the nine because it's focusing on the nine fruits of the Spirit that we would focus on that, that portion of Scripture in Galatians 5.22, this work that God does in us. It's not produced by us. It's something that's produced by Christ in our life as he produces his character and nature in us. And basically what we're asking, inviting you to do is during this nine weeks to take time to, to have nine conversations with your family. You may not have kids in the house, that's okay. Do it with your spouse. You may not have a spouse uh, in the house, okay? Uh, it's okay to just... Uh, do it with a friend. Call somebody else from church. Call a neighbor that doesn't know the Lord, right? And say, would, would you be willing to trek with me as I do this campaign and draw closer to the Lord? Um, and so what we'd like you to do is to have nine conversations out here in the foyer, the first at home center. All the materials are there. You can see me after service if you make that choice or you can email me this week and say, hey, I went in and I will mail you uh, a packet in the mail. But the main key to the materials that you're going to need is this activity book. In this activity book, there are nine uh, conversation starters. And our hope is that you will take this starter and then you will take the messages that you're going to hear on Sunday. Pastor Dennis will begin next Sunday preaching about love. And, uh, and so you'll have some, some things to ponder on and to pray over and to talk about with your family or your spouse or your friend. And so you take that uh, activity book, walk through that conversation, and, uh, and those are what you do every week. Along with that, what we want to invite you to do is to journal uh, about those conversations. Again, in this activity book, you're going to find uh, pages in the back where you can journal what you are learning, what God's speaking to you, what your kids are learning, what you're talking about as you go through these uh, activities and things that are, that are here provided for you in this activity book. And then at the conclusion, what we'd like for you to do for everybody that's participating, particularly for that grand prize, uh, we want you to bring those in. We want to see what uh, God has taught you and your kids. And then lastly, uh, nine posts on Facebook or email. Um, if you're on Facebook, you know, snap a picture of you and your friend, you know, with your activity book, cheesing it up, you know, for the camera uh, as you read through uh, those conversations and talk about that together. Um, and post it on Facebook, okay? Hashtag first at home, okay? Hashtag first at home. If you don't do Facebook, that's okay. Email us those things. We love pictures uh, because, again, all these things just encourage other people going, hey, they're doing it. Maybe I can do it too, right? And it encourages people to participate. So, again, it's nine conversations, nine journal entries, and then nine posts. Um, I want to say this to you that if, if, you're, not, uh, if you're not just gung-ho to participate in all of it you're not worried about 
the grand prize or anything like that, I want to encourage you, it's still okay to come grab this activity book and just go through this material, you know, on your own as you spend your devotional time with the Lord. Uh, it's completely okay to just grab bits and pieces, but do something. We all have to start somewhere, don't we? I think sometimes we get overwhelmed, just like we've been talking about the past couple weeks about reading the Bible through in a year. We look at this uh, overwhelming goal sometimes, and we're like, I just can't do it. I can't face, it. it's just too big for me. We gotta start somewhere, right? And so we're only talking about nine weeks. I believe in you, is that all right? I believe that you can do it. You and your family or you and a friend, you can do this. And so stop by out there at the First at Home Center today and let me uh, give one of these activity books to you. And lastly, uh, before I just wrap this up, um, we have some wristbands, okay? So even if you're not gonna do any of that, I wanna encourage everybody, we've got tons of wristbands. I wanna encourage all of you to stop by and grab one of these wristbands. It simply says, uh, first at home, the nine on it, and then it has John 15, five summarized on it. That says, remain in me and you will bear fruit. Come on, how many wanna bear fruit for the Lord? Come on, how many wanna bear fruit for the Lord? We want him, his life to be produced in you, amen. And so I wanna encourage you just to come get this as a prayer reminder. Okay, as a prayer reminder that you're going to say, God, produce your life in me. As I pray, as I read your word, produce your character, your nature, and your life in me. Is that okay? Amen. Amen. And lastly, guys, I do want to say, um, because we believe in what we're doing, we're willing to give you a grill. Okay? So we, we hoped in bringing this out that it would just uh, energize something in you that would say, man. That's a really nice grill up there. It is a five burner char broil grill uh, with the gas tank and some utensils inside of it. That sounds pretty good, right? And again, we're not doing this to bribe you all the way, okay? Maybe a little, but if we can use something to encourage you to do something that will help you and your family grow towards Jesus, we will do it because we believe that what Deuteronomy says is true, that you and I should be investing in the lives of our family. And if we do that, our kids will know Christ, our, our legacy will be of him, and that's what we all desire, isn't it? Amen. So I want to encourage you to journey together with Christ as we do the nine. We love you guys. Thank you, Pastor Brent. By the way, there's just one grill. Everyone does not get a grill. This is not Oprah and... Uh, There'll be a drawing for those who were faithful. And uh, <laughs> aren't you glad heaven's not like that? If you're faithful, you're, you're in, you know. <laughs> Please do participate. I've been around you people for the past year or so, and you need these, you need these things, uh, the nine. More importantly, I've been around me uh, for the past 50, almost 53 years now, and uh, I need them. So we'll walk that together. Remember, as I prepare these messages, I get double-dipped and triple-dipped uh, in conviction. So it's going to be good. He was saying next Sunday I'll preach on love, which I will by God's grace. But I think, man, Dennis, make sure you don't preach about love in a hateful way. And uh, <laughs> listen, uh, we've decided not to have worship gatherings uh, during the week uh, for the duration of the month of January, Monday through Saturday, giving us six days of separation. That way, if someone is sick with COVID or anything else, it gives you a little bit of a chance to know that and, uh, and you know, to stay away or to be extra careful. And... Um, but there were two events already on our calendar for January that were not our events per se. One was the Gaston Gospel Homecoming with Heart to Heart, which we have at the end of January every year. And, uh, but they have decided to move that event. So that's going to be in May. That's going to be May 14th. So I don't know if you've heard that yet, but that's the news on the concert, May 14th. The other is an event uh, with Kingdom Men, which is just a community group of, uh, that, that's uh, providing some ministry to men. And... We really debated about whether to, to, to sort of to pull the plug on that and say, not yet, but it's, but it's not our event, and it's going to be, uh, they're going to be spread out in this big room. It's going to be, um, you know, uh, as safe as they can possibly make it. Pastor Brent is on that leadership team with some other pastors in the community, so that event is still happening this Thursday. So men, if you feel safe and, and you're uh, interested in coming out, Maybe you've already had COVID, and, and for some period of time, you're very safe. <laughs> you can't get it. You can't give it to anybody. Uh, it's a great feeling in a way. I'd rather not have been sick, but 
kind of glad to have it over with at the same time. So, uh, men, there'll be some barbecue at 6 o'clock, pre-packaged very safely for you, and then at 7 o'clock the service starts in here. So that'll be this week. Use your wisdom, uh, be careful, and, uh, and come out if that's the best decision for you. Uh, we've been gone for six weeks. Six weeks ago we were in the sanctuary. We were out for five weeks, but it's been six weeks since we've been here. And, uh, which is half the time it was earlier when we took that longer break early in, in 2020. Uh, we are so blessed to have grown in our online experience over these past several weeks and months. Even prior to uh, 2020, we had really been working on that. Uh, thank you to David Masters for being such an important part of that uh, ministry here. Uh, for, yeah, go ahead. Thank David. We appreciate you, man, very much. Very much. And there are others as well that have worked really hard on that. Um, it's been important for us to be online during these times, and we will be online every Sunday. And to those who are watching this morning, I love you, and we're glad that you're here. One thing that we cannot do very effectively online is our annual church business meeting because we need to elect new deacons by secret ballot. And I just think that secret ballot part of that is an important part of it. And so our board of deacons, our, uh, our board of deacons have exercise their discretion to move our annual business meeting to the end of February. Normally it's the last Sunday in January, but we're going to move it to the end of February to try to give us a little distance uh, from this disease. If we need to, we'll move it again, but that's our plan right now. It's tentative. We will announce that two weeks prior to the meeting, and um, so just want to give you that information. Today is the day we normally would have announced the January meeting, so I want to make sure to give you that, um, that information. So, And my shirt... I know you're wondering, so I'll just let you see. It says, Real Men Love Kids Ministries. Uh, several months ago, Pastor Jared went to a conference, and he called me. He said, I will buy you this shirt if you'll wear it on a Sunday morning. And uh, so I said, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. But uh, truth is, it ran a little small, I believe. Uh, and, uh, but now that I, the Lord's done a work in my life, I could squeeze into it. And so... I do love kids' ministry, and I, and I hope I'm a real man. So let's get to the message. This morning I want to preach to you a message that I've titled Pinball Christianity. I ordered some pinballs this week. I just wanted to see what they really felt like and, and looked like in my, in my hand. Uh, five of them. I've got a little, a little tray in my drawer that I put all five of those in there and do, knock the one into the others and then the one on the end comes off. The three in the middle never move. You know, I, I sat there for hours this week just knocking these pinballs into each other. A pinball is made from steel. It's a one and a sixteenth inches in diameter. It weighs 2.8 ounces and it can reach speeds, believe it or not, of up to 90 miles an hour. Inside that game, when it's slapped by a flipper into a bumper or a ramp on the quest to keep the ball from going down the drain. Those are all real terms. A pinball can bounce between bumpers back and forth some eight times in a half second. Far from simply being impacted by the flippers controlled by the one playing the game, the field of play is filled with magnets and other devices that are controlled by solenoids Solenoids are interesting because they do nothing. They are dormant until a circuit is activated and they are charged with current. Then they become powerful electromagnets that can pull and hold the pinball on or out of the field of play. They're dormant until that circuit gets closed. That's the way we are sometimes. We're fine until we get triggered. Then someone or something has us in their tractor beam and we're stuck. The back box portion of the game is, the, is the, the, the sign on the back. It's brilliantly lit and it features art that is designed to grab your attention. And, and you know, it's just begging you, come play this game, come play this game. And it sucks you in and bounces you around with whatever trap, trick, or treatment that it can provide. Uh, this video that you see playing behind me is from the Slow Mo Guys. It's a YouTube channel. And uh, I wanted you to know that's where that came from. And I'll post that whole video. It's about 13 or 14 minutes. He did just go through a whole uh, demonstration of how pinball works. But I'll post that just so that those guys can get the appropriate credit. Bouncing around like a pinball is the way many people live and lean into their Christian experience. Bouncing around. Back and forth, back and forth. 
But what does the scripture say? 1 Corinthians 15, 58, the Apostle Paul declares this. Therefore, my beloved brothers, or my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Steadfast, immovable, always abounding Christianity is not the same thing as pinball Christianity. Did you hear me? Pastor Brent wasn't wrong. It's a, it's a, little, it's a little sedate in here today. <laughs> Listen, if I were sitting there, I'd probably be exactly the same way. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. He's not describing pinball Christianity. He's describing steadfast Christianity. Pinball Christianity is the one in which you're bouncing around with every trick and trap that can be presented to you. One thing, then another, then another. Flavor of the month Christianity. What's the latest fad? Where's the latest revival? Who's the latest preacher that I want to follow? Who's saying what I want to hear someone say? Who is taking my profession of faith in Jesus Christ and appropriating it for a purely political point of view? No, Paul says steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That kind of Christianity does not need a flavor of the month or the latest fad. Steadfast Christianity understands that the refreshing resources of revival don't have to be chased down geographically or found in the ministry of some man or some woman, but that the very real presence of God is available to us anytime we grow up enough and choose to lay access to it. Anytime. We're not knocking on God's door asking Him to come. He's knocking on our door, according to the book of Revelation. I don't need to hear someone say what it is that I'm looking for someone to say. That's what Paul warned Timothy about. He said, they're going to come to you, young Pastor Timothy. They're going to come to you. They're going to have itching ears, and they're going to say, preach this, say that, take this position, make sure to come over here. And he's saying, Timothy, I want you to hear me as your mentor, as the one that's helped to bring you up, as the one that saw the gift of God in you and laid hands on you. This is what you do. You preach the word, preach the word, preach the word, preach the word, not like a pinball jumping all over the place, but you just preach the word, preach the truth to them as it's exposed by Scripture. My Christian witness, my profession of faith is not to be appropriated or, or misappropriated for, for a political message or anything else. It's much too rich for that. The Apostle Paul said in Romans, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for all who believe. All he, said, he literally said to the Jews and to the non-Jews. In that passage in Romans, to the Jews and to the non-Jews, to the, to the whites and to the blacks, to the Asians and the Hispanics, to Republicans and Democrats, to those who have a lot, to those who have a little, whether you are sick or whether you're healthy, whether you're in prison or in freedom, whether you're young or whether you're old, the gospel is the power of God to salvation for all who believe. That's the message. That's the message. And when we reduce it to something else to be used for politics or pandemics or even for religion, maybe especially religion, maybe especially religion, we've abused and misappropriated the presence of God or who God is and what He's doing in the earth, what He's doing in us. We should stop bouncing around like a pinball and center ourselves on the person of Jesus Christ. But we're drawn by these magnets that are all over the field of our lives. These solenoids that unexpectedly receive juice. And when they do, bam! They suck us in. And sometimes even the very elect are deceived. And we forget that the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ was here before any of this, and it will be here forever. Listen, we've got to find Jesus again. We've got to find Jesus. 
Who is he to you personally? I'm asking you a personal question this morning. Who is Jesus Christ to you? Where is he in your life? What place have we given him personally? Paul said in Ephesians that God is calling us to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, Paul said, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Jesus Christ, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Listen, steadfast does not simply mean stubborn. If you've gone there in your mind this morning, come back out of there. That, a, a solenoid just sucked you in. Steadfast doesn't mean obstinate, stodgy, stuffy, cynical, cruel, abusive, ignorant, rude, arrogant, condescending, sarcastic, scornful, contemptuous, sneering, sardonic, vicious, ruthless, harsh, insulting, violent, inconsiderate, impolite, egotistical, haughty, always right, disdainful, demeaning, patronizing, or pompous. That's not what it means. It's fun putting that one together. <laughs> It doesn't mean obstinate, stodgy, stuffy, cynical, cruel, abusive, ignorant, rude, arrogant, condescending, sarcastic, scornful, contemptuous, sneering, sardonic, vicious, ruthless, harsh, insulting, violent, inconsiderate, impolite, egotistical, haughty, always right, disdainful, dis demeaning, patronizing, or pompous. When I can do it all in one breath, I'm fully healed from COVID. <laughs> I'm a ways away. <laughs> Just two chapters before this passage that we're reading today, just two chapters before that is a chapter that you know we will visit next Sunday, 1 Corinthians 13. He was not telling us in 1 Corinthians 13 to love and then in 1 Corinthians 15 to be rude. He's saying to be steady. He's saying to be committed He's saying to let our relationship with Jesus Christ really take priority in our lives. That maybe the first thing I do in the morning is, is speak to him. Maybe the first thing I do in the morning is take a look at what he's speaking to me through his word. Before I jump on any social media platform, before I get involved in anything else, before I start to worry about what the day is going to bring me, that somehow, I don't mean in a legalistic way, that if I missed it one morning, I, I'm a bad child i just mean that we find a place of priority in our lives for jesus christ to come in and be who he is meant to be to us he is lord what does it mean to be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord it goes something like this my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Will you help me? On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand let those words come back to you sometime this week when you just get absolutely tore up first of all when you get tore up by something this week i just want you to think some solenoid has got me it's got me and then you sing a couple of bars of that old hymn of the church and let it come in and and help you it means that i don't have to worry about what's happening around me with politics that mean i don't have an opinion it doesn't mean that I can't participate. It doesn't mean that. But it means I don't have to be tore up about it. I don't have to be worried about it. God's not worried. When God worries, we can worry. When God panics, it is time for us to panic. God's not worried. I don't have to worry about what's happening with pandemics and pestilence or, or plagues of any kind. Why? Because I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and not be afraid because I'm not alone. He's walking it with me. Paul is telling us to maintain our focus. We don't bounce from one thing to another, pulled in and played. No, no, we tend to our relationship with Jesus Christ and we walk in that. 
Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Amplified says, Be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, always doing your best and, and doing more than what is needed, being continually aware that your labor, even to the point of exhaustion in the Lord, is not futile nor wasted. It is never without, pur without purpose. Listen, the Apostle Paul got banged around a good bit. He got banged around like a pinball, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But he never forgot his purpose. He never took his eye off the ball. He never lost his focus. Jesus faced indescribable pain, but he was never pushed off of his mission of redemption and reconciliation. He never forgot why he was here, even though they were coming at him, coming at him. Let's get back to the gospel. Let's get back to the gospel. Let this be the year that you really take your relationship with God seriously. Work for it. You don't have to work for it to be saved, but you need to work for it for that relationship to be healthy. You don't have to work for it to get saved, but you have to work to have a healthy relationship with God. You've got to put some investment in that. You've got to focus on that. You've got to do it. I'm not telling you to be hyper-spiritual. Please don't. I'm telling you to have a genuine, vested relationship with Jesus Christ. You want a stimulus package? Read your Bible. Pray. Doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be poetic or pretty. I started to say it doesn't have to be powerful, but if you pray, it is powerful. Every time. Pray. Worship with your church in person or online. Worship. We need that time. You know how you maintain your focus? You get refocused on Sunday morning worshiping with your church family. Not in a legalistic way. Not let's take the role and send somebody a, a demerit if they miss. I know most people when they log on online don't stay the exact whole time. <laughs> Give your time. Give your money. Serve in some meaningful way this year. I'm talking about taking our relationship with God seriously, and only you can do it for you. You've got to make a decision. This is the year. Be steadfast, immovable. Slurred that. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. I've quoted that passage, that portion of that passage, several times in this message already to you. But one of the most important words in this text that you see on this screen right now is the very first word that says, therefore. The very first word Therefore, my beloved brothers. Some translations say, so then, brothers and sisters. Or, so, my dear brothers and sisters. The message says, with all this going for us, my dear, dear friends. One translation says, and I liked it the best, it says, as a result of all this, my loved brothers and sisters. What? What comes before this verse that we've had on this screen this whole time I've been preaching? In light of all this, so then, therefore, if you backed up into chapter 15, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I can give you a sort of a bullet point summary of what is before the therefore. Paul's talking about the gospel in this chapter. Paul is talking about resurrection power in this chapter. Before we get to this message about being steadfast, unmovable, he's talking about the gospel, and isn't that central? Isn't that the point? He said, now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you. It's the gospel. He reminds them that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day. 
He gives us that reminder. Paul then talks about our own resurrection. He's been talking about the resurrection of Christ, but then he tells us that if Christ was raised from the dead, then we can be raised from the dead. How about that? If Christ was literally, we can be raised from the dead. If Christ was raised from the dead, then we can be raised from the dead. Christ has been raised from the dead. He said, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. By man came death. He's talking about Adam. By a man came resurrection talking about jesus he said for as in adam all die so also in christ shall all be made alive he's reminding us that when we die we are dying as people that perish we're dying as people that look like they've been defeated we're dying as people that look like they have withered away into nothing we're dying as people that maybe they've become a shadow physically of their former self he's saying i know that the last thing you see before you say goodbye for a little while is someone that's been broken someone that's hurting someone that's been taken i know you see that this these people are dying as people that perish but when we are raised we are raised as imperishable what is sown is perishable what is raised is imperishable it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power it is sown as a natural body it is raised as a spiritual body that's the promise just as we bore the image of the man of dust meaning just like we were like Adam we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven Ha! Paul is telling us that Jesus Christ conquered death for us. Listen, picking up in verse 53. Our text was verse 58. Let's pick it up at verse 53. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters... Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Man, that therefore is an important word. In light of all this, all of this life that we're getting, all of this redemption that we're getting, in light of all of this, he's saying, will you take it seriously? Will you invest in your relationship with Jesus Christ? They're going to sing a song this morning that is right to this point. And as they sing, whether you're sitting here or whether you're sitting at home, will you make the decision this morning to place Jesus at the center of it all?
be the center of your church. Jesus, be the center of your church. And every knee will bow, every tongue shall confess you. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's just really do it. And if you're not ready, help. Uh, let somebody else help get you ready. Would you stand with me this morning? We're going to close our service the way we close every service. But let's make sure that today, more than ever before, we really, really mean it. From Psalm 19, 14, may the words of my, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I love you guys. I love you guys that are watching. Have a great week. Go make it matter. 